Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, if you all have got an arbitration contract, if you've gone to court and the courts have sat up there and ignored you and told you you didn't know what you were doing, told you that there was no contract, they lied to you. But you didn't do your research because you expected someone like me to do it for you. You kept calling me and saying, what do I do next? It's okay. I understand. You've never done this before, so of course you would have to ask somebody for their advice. That's what people like me are here for. It's just there was too many of you. And you were all compiling upon me at the same time several different questions seeking the same thing. So I know it's taken a little while. You're going to go back into that courtroom and you're going to do a motion to vacate. Look at the rules. Every court has a rule on vacating a judgment. You're going to tell the court, you erred. You violated my rights. You interfered with a lawful contract between parties. You denied us. Pay attention because you're going to put this in your motion. You denied us our right to contract. You impeded our right to enter into a content, uh, consensual agreement. Excuse me. Now, I want y'all to see something. Right now, this thing is 13 pages long. Hold on, I ain't finished. This thing is going to be over 50 pages long when I get through. Some of the cases is going to be stated over and over again. Because they keep saying the same things over and over again. Sorry about that, y'all. But y'all just don't understand that I kept trying to tell you you have the right to do this. But you said, but the court said, and you were putting the court's words over mine. And I understand why you would do that, especially since I'm telling you, but the Supreme Court said, no, they can't do that. You're telling me, well, yes, they can. The court said, blah, blah, blah. When the party's contract delegates arbitrability questions to an arbitrator, the court must respect the party's decision as embodied in the contract. It says, if the contract says the arbitrator should decide the question rather than the court as to who will resolve the threshold arbitrability question, and when the party's contract delegates such to an arbitrator, it talks about the courts, how they have sidestepped, overwritten the contract to decide it themselves. Well, they can't do that. That's what the Supreme Court held. And everybody was using Archer. Why? Because somebody put up a video telling everybody how important Archer was. So everybody started using Archer. When they used Archer, they won. When you used Archer, you lost. What does that tell you? That describes discrimination. It described, I didn't say it was discrimination. I said it describes discrimination. Why? Well, the courts are supposed to be fair. They're not supposed to be one decision over here in this corner and then another decision in another corner. Now, I'm getting rid of this stuff right here because i got to do it one more game because I'm going to add some more case law to this. I, I said case law. <laughs> I don't know why I'm cursing at y'all like that. There's no such thing as case law. I'm going to add some more case sites to this. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to do that, because see, you guys need to understand, the Fifth Circuit, this is the culprit. Everybody's relying on the Fifth Circuit for coming to conclusions, making analysis. I don't know who gave the Fifth Circuit that type of power, but I keep hearing the Fifth Circuit decided this, the Fifth Circuit decided that. What the? I'm, I apologize. Well, Archer and Wright sells, that particular case started in the Fifth Circuit, ladies and gentlemen. And when the Fifth Circuit does something, it used to be like the Ninth Circuit. Ninth Circuit, when it did something, everybody would fall in line with the Ninth Circuit. Not no more. The Ninth Circuit ain't got no credit. Everybody hate the Ninth Circuit. Talk about the Ninth Circuit like it's a dog. And trust me, they are dogs. All of the judges on the Ninth Circuit. I have no respect for any of those idiots. Why? Because they don't follow the law. They follow their opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a difference between me giving you my opinion. When I say that they're idiots, that's my opinion. That's not the law. I made a statement. Well, see, if you notice these courts, they're making statements. They're not giving you law. Now, if you notice when the Supreme Court makes a decision, 
they base their decision on facts and conclusions of law. Go back and look at Archer and Henry White. Notice how in that particular case, the Supreme Court relied on the Federal Arbitration Act, went directly to the Federal Arbitration Act and to the contract. They relied on the facts because that was the facts. The facts had nothing to do with what the parties introduced into the case. The issue dealt with the Arbitration Act, the United States Arbitration Act, which is known as the Federal Arbitration Act, but the official title is the United States Arbitration Act. So the Supreme Court relied on the law as written, the statute. Because they did that, they came to a conclusion regarding the contract. Now, I want you to note what this, what this California court said, okay? Because it is very important that you pay attention to what the court said. This tells the reader almost nothing talking about the contract since a court has power to decide such issues and nothing in the AAA's rules state that AAA's arbitrators, the American Bar Association's Arbitration Association, as opposed to the court shall determine those threshold issues and has exclusive authority to do so. Now, hold on. Forget that. That court said there ain't nothing that prevents the courts from doing that. The thought, oh, excuse me. I apologize. They thought that since a court also has power to decide such issues and nothing in the AAA rules state that AAA's arbitrator, as opposed to the court, shall determine these threshold issues or has exclusive authority to do so, was squarely rebutted by the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Note, this is a direct quote from the United States Supreme Court. This is what they said, not what I said. This is what the Supreme Court said. Under the Federal Arbitration Act, parties to a contract may agree that an arbitrator rather than the court will decide disputes arising out of contract. When a dispute arises, the parties sometimes may disagree about the merits of the dispute, but also about the threshold arbitrability question. That is, whether their arbitration agreement applies to a particular dispute. Who decides the threshold arbitrability question? Well, according to the California court, the courts do. Not according to the Supreme Court. Under the Act, the United States Arbitration Act, and this court, United States Supreme Court, cases the question, sorry, I'm going to skip that song. The question of who decides arbitrability is itself a question of contract, not a question of the act, but a question of the contract. Why? Because the act allows the parties to an agreement by contract to an arbitrator, that an arbitrator rather than the court will decide threshold arbitrability questions, as well as the underlying merits of a dispute. But hold on now. I want y'all to understand something. Pay attention. They decided this in 1995. They decided this in 2010. When was this California case heard? Hold on. Let's go up here. 2012. This was already established precedent, and the courts continue to go against established precedent. So when you think that it is just you, it is not just you. You're going to have to stand up and fight. You're going to have to put your motion in to vacate judgment. Now, when you put up your motion to vacate judgment, guess what you're going to have? You're going to have me standing right there with you with documents such as this. This will be up on the website today. By the time this video is up, this will be up. Okay? Now, I just have to pull up one more set. Sorry, I want to give you overwhelming court precedent so that nobody in their grandmama can sit up here and say you did something illegal or wrong or you conspired with somebody. Now, look, hey, guys, I was on vacation. I couldn't do this for you before. But go back and take a look. Since March of this year, take a look at how many videos have been put up. 
Take a look at how much information has been put out. So don't nobody say that I am not helping people. Now, if I don't help you specifically, and there have been some people who have gotten upset because I haven't come to their rescue specifically. Do me a favor. You can kiss the dark side of my, I'm sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to say is stop being so selfish. I ain't never promised to help you directly. Now, my, 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 my mortgage people, y'all know who y'all is. Not, not you people who got mortgages. No, y'all ain't my mortgage people. I'm, I'm opening the window, y'all, because the wind is blowing, and I need some air because it's 101 degrees. It, it feels like it's 90, so but it's 101 degrees, so I need the air to be blowing through here. So y'all going to be hearing the wind blowing on the, the headset, and I got the fan turned away, so you're not hearing the in the wind blowing into the headset, so pilot my guys for the last video that had that. I know it was all throughout the whole video that wasn't intentional. I didn't know that the fan was going to have that effect on these headphones because it wasn't blowing directly on them. So, as I'm apologize, okay? Now, watch this. Let's make sure. I got to make sure it does the right one. No, that's too big. Oh, you got some time, sir. This is uh, Casey and Jojo, everybody, and this is uh, I Care About You. Girl, you know I care about you. And I hope that, that I hope that what? I hope that you care for me, too. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing for you by putting this together for you, I'm putting together the case law for you. So you use this as your memorandum of law. This is your case precedent. All you got to do is repeat this in your motion for vacating of judgment. Look, avoid judgment can be challenged at any time. You don't have to challenge it 15 days after. This is not an appeal. This is saying, oh, wait, hold on, man. Wait, hold on, mother. You didn't have no jurisdiction to be doing that. What you what you doing? Ain't nobody gave you permission to just sit up here and dismiss my case thinking that you had the right to do that. Uh -uh. You, better, you better show me some jurisdiction, mother. That's what this does. That's what a motion to vacate does. Some of you, I know you've never done a motion to vacate, so go to YouTube, type in motion to vacate, and then start watching videos from the attorneys, not from somebody like me. No, 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 no. Don't watch a video from somebody like me. No, you want the ones that are done by the attorneys. Now, the attorneys are not going to tell you everything, you know, because they want to bring some money into their firms. So just pay attention. One will give some information and the other will give the other information. You know what I'm saying? So they're not going to give you everything, but they are going to give you something. You know what I'm saying? So pay attention to them. And then go in the court and stand on your square. What you're going to have to realize is that you, you're in the right. You're not in the wrong. You're in the right. You're not in the wrong. Why? Because you have the Supreme Court to back you. Now, these are not all Supreme Court cases, but these cases are all founded on Supreme Court precedent. That's right. You heard me. I said precedent. Precedent Lincoln. No, precedent as in established principles. Okay? Now, look. The, when the party's contract delegates the arbitrability question to an arbitrator, the court must respect the party's decision as embodied in the contract. Now, wait. Hold on. Now, you guys got to understand something. The courts are going to sit up here and say, well, the contract and the arbitration agreement are separate. You better believe they're separate, you ignorant mother. Well, then that means that you can't challenge both. You better believe you can. But it's called severability doctrine. The severability doctrine. Severating them. There's a doctrine. And it says you can't challenge both at the same time. So when they challenge the contract as a whole, and in every single one of your cases, they challenge the contract as a whole. Well, it had an arbitration clause. They cannot challenge the contract as a whole. They must challenge segments of the contract or challenge the arbitration clause, but they cannot challenge the contract as a whole. Okay, hold on. We're going to put that in here now. We're going to put that at the bottom. I just need y'all, because y'all don't think I know what I'm talking about, some of y'all. Hold on. Uh-uh, don't want to delegate. Wait, hold on. Let's get rid of this.
Oh, y'all, y'all ain't forgot about Ronald, uh, Ronald West. To have y'all, Ron West. Well, <laughs> I was gonna put his mother's name here, you know, but that one's spelled just slightly different, almost the same meaning, but slightly different. Anyway, uh, cannot C H A L L E N G E cannot challenge the contract as a whole, especially when it includes an arbitration agreement. But I'm stopping right here. It is not enough to challenge another provision of the contract, the contract or the contract as a whole. I don't want this one. That's not going to, the court is not to consider the challenges to the question, the contract as a whole, either on the ground that directly affects the entire agreement, the agreement was fraudulently induced, or on the grounds that it was in of legality of one of the contract's provisions of the whole contract's validity. Now, this is an arbitration agreement. This is Renner Center. Renner Center West versus Jackson. Okay, this is where the severability doctrine is mentioned. I can put that up there because I already know what it's going to say. Now, watch this. Hold on. I got to get rid of this right here. And then I do that. All right. Can I tell us the contract as a whole when a contract contains an arbitration agreement? That is the rule because arbitration agreement and the contract are two separate agreements. There are two agreements in one. Okay. So a challenge to another provision of the contract or the contract as a whole. Therefore, sorry, rubbing my eye. Yeah, because it itches. Okay. Therefore, cannot prevent the court from enforcing an arbitration agreement. Well, in Archer, the Supreme Court says that any such challenges, if it delegates it, oh, like I told you guys, severability doctrine. Severability from, see, an arbitration provision is separate from the rest of the contract. So, hold on. Copy. This is for you guys. This ain't for me. I already know this information. Okay? This is for you because you don't know what to say when these idiots open their mouths. So what I'm doing, we're going to do this, eh? Okay? We're going to put this up. This is for you guys. So don't say that ain't did nothing for us. Take a look at the time. It is 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I woke up at 7.30 this morning stressing about y'all. I didn't go to sleep until 3.30. I'm not joking. Those of you who know me know that that's the type of hours I keep. Oh, my song, y'all. Oh, my song, y'all. Y'all, if y'all don't know this song by my boys, ooh-wee, a piece of land, mm. somewhere, 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 sing it, boy, preach it, brother, sorry, I just, I like the life, life, I just like the way the song is done, okay, temperature's like, what, oh, Man, this is KC and JoJo, y'all. They're singing life. Have y'all ever did life? Well, I got some people who are inside institutions who are doing life. And I told one of them last night that you got people out here who's got your back. This individual, I know everybody thinks that everybody's in jail deserves to be there, that they did something wrong. Well, this individual may or may not have done something wrong. However, he paid for the first wrong, then they came back at him because they worked out deals with people to bring another charge against him on the federal level. Without any evidence, they used testimony from convicted quote-unquote felons against him because they offered them deals. That whole system has got to stop where the prosecution gets to offer someone a deal for testimony. 
that should automatically be a red flag as to the validity of the testimony. Okay, but it doesn't happen that way. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to paste this information here. I don't want to get taken off track. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. I forgot. I just did only that. Let's get rid of that. Now I got to go and type, uh, put in the case law. Now, remember, this is cannot challenge the contract as a whole and the arbitration of clause at the same time. It's a violation of the severability doctrine. Okay, it's called the severability doctrine. I told you, my job was to become an expert at this mother stuff. That's why I needed to go on vacation because I needed the not being distracted so that I could focus on one thing. Well, you can't seem to focus on nothing, so I guess you did need to go. Look, didn't I tell you, you get take back outside. I apologize, y'all. God, I didn't even see him come in. I did, I did not hear him come in. I've been listening to Casey and JoJo, and he snuck in while I'm listening to Casey and JoJo. Stupid mother. Don't worry about it. I will take care of him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this for you so that you'll have it. Like I said, there are quite a few of you out there. If you know somebody who's had an arbitration, whether they've had an arbitration through SAA or they had it through any other independent arbitration association, and the court sat up there and made a determination regarding a contract where the contract specifically said that the parties will determine whether or not the contract was valid or not. Okay, if that is the case, wait, we got to undo this. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to undo that. I got to try this one. No, it's the same thing. See, I thought the cases in the twins would give me the case law. But I'll, I'll keep it this way. What happens is you click on the link and you will get, if you copy it from the link, each one of these cases will give you the hyperlink. I just ain't going to give you that type of my time. You see, pay attention to this. We agree. Reviewing the contract as a whole and the arbitration agreement is not ambiguous. Section 4.5 provides mediation or arbitration as a method of alternative dispute resolution for those claims subject to arbitration and those claims which are not okay understand we're only bringing this up because if the contract itself is unenforceable then the arbitration clause within the contract is also unenforceable this is a lie because they are two separate agreements and if the contract is unenforceable, only pay attention, the arbitrator can make such a determination. The entire arbitration agreement, we conclude that this provision unfairly is unfairly one-sided and substantially unconscionable. The entire arbitration agreement is unenforceable. A trial court may either sever an unconscionable or otherwise unlawful provision from an arbitration agreement and enforce the remainder, restrict the application of the provision so as to, but see, these are all cases prior to the Supreme Court decision, unanimous decision. That's why the decision in Archer was unanimous, so that the other courts, the lower courts, could not circumvent the process. It's exactly what the Supreme Court stated. That's why Justice Kavanaugh, I actually have respect for Kavanaugh. A lot of people talked about him. I don't know nothing about Kavanaugh. I just know listening to him and his conclusions, he's been on the money. A lot of people have been talking against the Supreme Court, talking about it's Roberts Court and Roberts this, and they all have these opinions of Roberts, who's a Republican. And it's Republicans who are talking about him because he's not doing the things the Republican wants. Well, Roberts is not supposed to be a Republican or a Democrat. He's supposed to base things up on the law, but he's only one person. The court does not rely on his rule. It's a majority rule venue. So y'all really have to understand that. Okay? Now I'm going to leave the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay? Consequently, the entire arbitration agreement is unenforceable. Well, I can't use this. You know why? Because all they're talking about is unenforceability. A court may not consider a claim that an arbitration provision is unenforceable if it is a subterfuge for a challenge to the entire agreement in which the arbitration clause 
is only part, is unconscionable. The contention may be presented to the arbitrator, not the court, even if the agreement were not waived by the failure to raise it below. Okay, I'll get rid of these because these are not these are not even close to what it should be saying. It should be what I looked for was this. Come on now. See if I can see you, if I can see you again. Um uh give me one second. What I'm looking for is this. Okay, the first thing I do is I take this because we're going to add the other case law that will work for your benefit, not the stuff that where they're denying where the Supreme Court case has overruled because that's what the courts have said, that the courts have been circumventing the process. A court may not consider... is unenforceable this is my other song by casey and jojo i like you know if loving you is wrong you know that theme right there okay we're gonna get rid of this unconscionable Do the right thing right here, baby. Sorry, I just like the song. Under the federal arbitration, that a court may not consider that an arbitration provision is unenforceable or substitute for a challenge. Now, if this one says the same thing, I want you all to understand. This lets you know this is the precedent. That's why everybody's repeating it. The exact same phrase. All these cases, repeating it. That's what I'm looking for. Look, do you guys not understand? That's how the Bible works. That's what they do. They do the same thing the Bible does. The Bible backs up what it says at least three times. That's why the, the pay attention, the doctrine is. It's a principle. It's not an interpretation. You can't interpret scripture. Scripture says what it says. So you must find at least two scriptures to agree. That's why you often say, well, doesn't that other scripture say something just like this? Okay. Well, this is the same practice that they do. I've been trying to tell you. I know, but you haven't said it like this before. I know because I think that I'm talking to people who already understand it, but I keep forgetting that you guys don't have the legalese in your head. You're not thinking about this stuff 24 hours a day like I am. Ladies and gentlemen, this is on my mind. Every little thing I do, you're on my No, this is on my mind all day long. This is all I'm thinking about all day long. Okay, so that's why I'm sitting up here taking the time, putting together this document online, letting you see my thought process so that you can incorporate it into your thought process. I'm telling you about casetext.com. Okay? I am telling you about casetext.com. You keep hearing me announce that company. I don't own any stake or any share in that company. They are not paying me to say their name, casetext.com. But I promise you, this site right here, I had a friend, he told me about case text, and I ignored him. Take me back, I understand. No, 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 yeah. Sorry, that's my Casey and JoJo, y'all. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he tried to tell me about case text. You know what I didn't do? I didn't want to listen. Why? Because... He didn't know what he was talking about. Well, I'm going to tell you, he was right. I'm going to let him know, too. When I talk to him again, I may even call him later today. He's up in San Francisco. He's watching this video. Um, so I'm going to let him know so that he knows that he was right when he told me, because he just told me at the beginning of this year, when I was sitting up there getting ready to get out, he was letting me know about case tech because he took a case where they talked about the other Supreme Court, he took that case and he put it in case text and that case didn't come up. And he says, no, if that case does exist, it'll be in case text. His exact words, he was right. 
but it wasn't in case text. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to, because I just got sidetracked doing Casey and JoJo and <laughs> talking to you guys with that energy, Swanson versus H&R Brock. What I'm looking for is to make sure that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to make sure that I copied and pasted. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this document, I want you all to see what we're doing because I got to get off of it. Uh-oh, can't do it that way. That title is too big for it. Uh, no. The federal court must enforce arbitration clause even if the entire contract is invalid. Pay attention. Give me this, because we, <laughs> we we ain't going nowhere. Let me give me a second. That's what we're gonna call this particular. No, I did the wrong thing. Give it. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. This is on my phone, so this is my playlist on the phone. I haven't actually had a chance to do the playlist, so this is the same playlist I used to have on there, and then it's gonna be Jaheen with Impossible. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna save this under the title I told you about. Okay, what I need is this right here. A federal court must enforce an arbitration clause even if the entire agreement is invalid. Hold on now. Did you hear? The reason why, do you guys want to know why the court has to enforce an arbitration clause even if the whole agreement is invalid? Well, the reason being is because the arbitrator when they go over the contract, if they determine that the agreement is invalid, they will invalidate the arbitration clause. Okay, but the courts are not liking the fact that these, hold on, duty to respond contracts, okay, where they have a duty to respond if the offeree silence may be deemed as consent to a contract if the offeree has a duty to respond to an offer and fails to act in face of this duty. So the courts don't want to be forced to agree with their own case law. So we're going to do this one. Give me one second. V. That's what we need. This one right here. And I'm going to add all of these cases. Now, some of the cases will be duplicate. Duplicative. We won't do H&R Bra. Okay, because we just did that one. We know that's there. So we'll do all the other ones underneath it. Okay. Do you guys think there's enough case law? Or, I'm sorry. Oh, God. Case text? I apologize because it's called case text for a reason. It's not called caselaw.com. It's called case text. So do you guys think there's enough case text? Because it's not law. This is just court precedent. This is how they have ruled. Okay, if they have ruled this way in the past, they must rule this way in the future unless there is a change in the law, in the understanding of the law. But there has been, as the Supreme Court says, no change as to the law and their court precedent. No, we can't do that. That's too large. That's not the one I want. I want this one. You're down with me for life is what they're going to say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Something ain't right. Can't do this either. Because I want the blue. I want the highlight. So we're going to have to do this. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I want. So what we're going to do... Uh-oh, got to put my period back there. All right, now let's get rid of that. Now, you see this right here? See how deep and dark and thick them numbers is? Woo-wee, them, them some thick numbers. We can't have them numbers and them letters being that thick because that's going to take up. Look at how many pages that took up. Yeah, we can, we can go up. We'll make it all the same thing. We're not going to go all the way, all the way, all the way up. We're going to stop in just a second. 
Uh oh, come on. I said a second. That was longer than a second. All right, stop right there. Stop! Sorry. My, my hand didn't want to stop, y'all. It just wanted to keep going and going and going like that bunny that just be energizing. And it just, that bunny don't know what he's doing. He's just energized and he's just stupid. That, that's why he do what he do. Because he's a stupid bunny. That's why he just keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know what? I think I will make it 11. So it's times Roman 11. I think I will make it 11. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at 33 pages worth of case law for you. No, do me a favor. Ask yourself who else will take the time to do this for you. This is your memorandum of law. And not only is it organized, not only is it highlighted, not only is it, oh, you know what I haven't done? I'll do it on this one. I haven't done it on the other one. So what we're going to do is we're going to, this is my boy Jaheen. Ever since I met you, girl, everything about you changed. I I'm sorry. It it's Jaheen. Come on now. Y'all know Jaheen. This is, lady. this is Jaheen, y'all. Lord have mercy. And if y'all know Mr. Jaheen, let him know that somebody actually appreciates and gives him some shouts out. Uh, I know he's got a lot of people who appreciate him because, you know, somebody told me he was Teddy Pendergrass, uh, that they knew each other. And I just need y'all to know if that is the case, yes, I could see that. And I have a lot more respect for him because I could see Teddy mentoring somebody like Jaheen. You know, I, I could literally see that. We're going we're gonna to put page numbers on here, ladies and gentlemen, for you guys. Okay, so this is 33 pages, so you get page numbers. You can rearrange these however you want. There is another set of laws in here. It probably won't be 33 when I finish with this right here because you see how that size is different than that size because of the same problem. So I'm going to minimize it, bring it to times, Romans, and minimize it as well because it should not be that big. There's no reason for it. So there'll probably be 29 pages. I've been waiting all my life to finally find my wife. This is this is my song, y'all. This is uh, just one of those songs that while you're inside an institution and they are taking away your freedom and you have access to MP3, you have the opportunity of staying connected because it is very hard to stay not lost inside there you know there was um mr anthony white if you guys have not looked up anthony white and his exoneration after 20 some years in jail for some officers lying on him planting false evidence 20 years now, everybody reads what they sow, and the truth always comes out. And I know a lot of people don't believe that, but it does always come out. Now these officers are looking at jail time, but will the jury find them guilty? Probably. And the judge will give them a little bit of time. They're retired, ladies and gentlemen. These officers were already in their 30s when this happened, probably in their 40s when this happened, because they were detectives. And you don't just uh, get, you know, come out of the academy and become a detective. So these officers were already probably in their 40s, and this was 25 some years ago. So they are retired, and now they're going to have to spend some time in retirement in a retirement home. Okay, I don't know what's going to happen to the idiots, but they're not the only officers. They're not the only detectives who act like this, ladies and gentlemen, just to get a win, and they work with the prosecution. This happens all the time, as I told you. These idiots charged me with driving without a license, without ever pulling me over, without ever stopping me, without ever issuing a ticket. They charged me with driving without a license. They said that I was required to do things without there being a court order, without there being a law. Do you understand that's why the court overturned everything? I was one of the fortunate ones because I served the true God, Jehovah. You heard me. That is the only reason why I am not in there any longer. If I will tell you the truth, there are a lot of people in there who have been done more wrong than I have been. 
and they're still there. But I relied on my God, Jehovah. I told you guys that before I went in there. The people who were trying, well, can we file this? And can and some people were saying, well, you guys need to file a body. You need to do this and you need to do it. And you don't even have to ask him. Just do it. Don't, don't ask him. Do it for him anyway. And I told my people, you let them know how much I appreciate that stupidity. Ain't nobody doing nothing on my behalf without my permission. Ain't what that what this is all about in the first place is people doing things that you don't have no knowledge about and you didn't give them permission. Everybody keeps wanting to blame SACOM for doing things on their behalf that they didn't give SACOM permission for. SACOM ain't doing nothing on nobody's behalf. We're doing the same as you. We're waiting for your bonds to mature and we're getting ready to start issuing. It's going to take a minute because there are quite a few of you. But we're getting ready to start issuing, and we're going to send it all at the same time. We're not going to send it out one person at a time. We're going to send it all at the same time. We're going to do it all at once. But the tax credits. We've already shown you the IRS recognizing the tax credits. So we're getting ready to send you guys the tax credits. Okay? We're getting ready to send you the transference of tax credits. Why? Because we can prove our contracts are valid. We can prove, I told you I was going to explain to you why the court said that the arbitration would still have to be had, that the arbitrator will make the decision. Well, here's the point. The reason why the court said that, because the arbitration agreement, if it's a valid agreement, the other party would have the opportunity of contesting it. They would have to show up at the arbitration hearing. If they refuse to show up at the arbitration hearing, technically they don't lose automatically. But if the other party brings evidence to the contrary to the arbitration agreement being invalid, then the arbitration agreement must be held as valid and they must be bound by the terms of that agreement. This is what the courts are upset with SAA about, which is why they've been trying to ruin SAA's reputation. And I told all of you, before everything was said and done, that we would put our complaints into the court against these wayward judges. They stake their lives, just like those two police officers, those three detectives, just like they stake their lives on planning false evidence. And they knew. And when they were called because the court ordered there to be a second trial, the second jury acquitted the man because when the officers were asked, where did they get the information? Where are their notes? What did they write it down at? Uh, all of a sudden, they can't find anything. And the jury didn't believe them. Ladies and gentlemen, this happens every day in this country. Every day, even now. Ain't nobody going to talk about how it's better now, the officers are better now. That's a bunch of bulls. I mean, I'm sorry. There is no way in the world these men, these same men growing up in the same force where they protect each other, where they still follow the code. Yes, there is a code. Matter of fact, wasn't that movie called The Code? Well, anyway, they still follow the code. There is no way in the world they done cleaned up. And there has been no attempt to clean up the police department. Do I hate police officers? You better believe I do not. Like I said, I have friends who are police officers, and most of the police officers I've met are okay people, including Sims and I forgot Sims' uh, partner. Uh, Man, I can't think of Sims Partners, Dave. <laughs> Sorry. There were two officers who patrolled our neighborhood, and they gave me a hard time one time. Then they would come up to the gym and play basketball, and I let them know. Now, you know, I ain't going to go easy on either one of you. You step out on this basketball court, and it's on. And so we ended up getting along all right. Okay? They treated me foul that one time. Technically, they didn't have a reason to rough me up like they did. They didn't hit me. They just slammed me on the hood of their car. And I turned my head and I looked up at them. I said, really? And all of my neighbors, <laughs> all of my neighbors started coming out of the homes. And they had to put me in the car immediately. I said, they're not going to do anything to you. I said, they're just standing out here because they're trying to figure out what are you doing to the one person in this neighborhood that don't bother nobody. And they put me in the car and they drove me around the block and they handcuffed me they were afraid that a riot was going to jump off. And these were all people of color. The officers were people of color. This was not people of non-color. But when you put a badge on somebody who has had no rights, 
who has had no power and you give that person power without training that person properly to handle power, Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, at SACOM, at S, well, I, I'm not a... I'm not a supervisor at SAE. I'm a regular subcontractor, and I'm a legal consultant. That's all I am for SAA. The same thing I'm doing for you guys right now, I do for SAA. But let me tell you something. Nobody will tell you that I ruled over anybody, and I was unfair to this day. Now, in my past, I've had those experiences of being unfair. When I was young and just getting started with having a little bit of power, that's why I can say you give somebody a badge and a little bit of power and they will more than likely abuse that power. Sorry, I turned towards the fan. I apologize. Let me turn back away. This is the end of this video, y'all. I'm glad we had an opportunity to have this discussion. I'm glad that y'all, y'all, y'all prevent, uh, not prevent it, but allowed me to put forth the video to where the federal courts must enforce arbitration clause even if the contract is invalid. Allowed me to put this document up. Now, originally I was gonna call it the arbitrator shall have the power to determine the existence and validity of a contract of which an arbitration clause forms part. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this whole document goes hand in hand and it brings up the Supreme Court determination. We're butting what the stupid courts were saying prior to that. That's exactly what the Supreme Court was saying is that some courts have attempted to short circuit the process. Why? Because they hate arbitration. Why? Because they don't have control over arbitration. Now, you're going to see some cases, there are two sections, and well, there are three sections in this document, okay? There are three sections in this document. So when you're looking at the document, when you're going through these 32 pages, I thought I was going to be 29 pages, but when you're going through these 32 pages, if you find duplicate case law, make sure the section the case law is in because you don't want to remove it from the other section because the other section, it's applicable there. You follow me? You're going to see uh, Shine, Archer and White, Sales versus Henry Shine. You're going to see that case several times throughout this because that's the basis for all of this. Okay? That's the basis for these rulings is what the Supreme Court said in Henry Schein versus Archer and White Cells. Understand this, Henry Schein versus Archer and White Cells right here, leave that there, do not remove that. Well, technically you can because it's here again. So let me remove the second one. The first one is bigger, so we'll keep the first one because it's highlighted. So there you go. So we got rid of the first one. But that's what I mean, if it's in the same section, you can delete it. If it's twice in the same section, However, if it's in one of the three sections and you see it again in the second section and the third section, don't do that. Get your hands off of that. What you doing touching that? Okay? That's what I'm trying to say. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go where I'm, I got to go because I don't want to be where they're from, you know, because they, they're coming from there. So apparently they're running from something or they, they're trying to avoid something. So I don't want to go where nobody's trying to run or avoid stuff. All right. Got to go, y'all. Y'all take care. And just know this, that I have confidence that if you guys do it the correct way, follow me, listen to me. If you guys do it the correct way by bringing your motion to vacate, highlight the information on the duty to respond and the other document that we just did talking about the arbitration clause, I think you guys should be okay. I think that you should start seeing some turnaround. And if you don't, then you appeal. And you do the fee waiver on appeal. Appeals are not hard. Okay? Appeals are not hard. Ladies and gentlemen, I am opening this document right here. This is called FileZilla. So I can load that document up online for you guys. And because it's going on 430, I don't have the energy to... Sorry, I've been up... Like I said, I got three hours of sleep last night, almost four, but I am exhausted and I still have some work around here I have to do, so I'll finish and I shouldn't be doing this complaint while I'm tired. Uh, this right here, see, I, I didn't notice this until a moment ago, that this is supposed to be here, 
okay? And what happens is this got brought out of its position. I don't know how that happened. So what we're doing right now is we're going to put it back where it belongs, you know, coming where it's from. Okay, but we'll get this document together. We'll take care of all the statements and everything. I'm at first, now you guys don't understand, I did lose this document. All that work I did a couple of days ago, I couldn't find this document. And it just so happens I had sent it to my phablet, saved it on my phablet. If I had not, my phablet came to my rescue, y'all. So because I saved it on the phablet, and I'm going to save it on the phablet this time too, because I saved it on the phablet, ladies and gentlemen, I had access to it. I, I know Google and or the system has an algorithm and it messes with things and it interferes with things and it knows that I'm doing this video right now. I'm all right with that. You know, it, it, that's what crackheads do, y'all. If he didn't know better, I don't know, what would he do? You know what? I'm going to save it here, but I'm going to save it the right way and the wrong way, too. So... Let me let y'all go. I hope y'all have a good day. Hope y'all have a good night. Hope you have a good time. Hope you have a good everything. Take care of yourselves, everybody. I'll talk to y'all later. I hope this information that's on this video proves helpful to many of you who need to get redressed with your arbitration agreements. Like I said, still go after the tax credits. Do not forget about the tax credits. We'll be talking more about that in the future. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.